Welcome back to Hasbro's Hide. Continuing the coating and assembly of our 6.5 Grendel build and the uh, receiver has now, upper and lower receiver have now been uh, fully assembled. Um, I haven't installed the uh, detent and spring yet on this just because I haven't installed the tube and castle nut and all there yet, but I will. Um, on this side, if you notice, I've coated everything including the uh, hammer and trigger pins just to make sure they look good. Uh, and then the selector is coated on both sides as well. I took all the little components and went ahead and coated the outsides of them, with the exception of the takedown pins on the uh, disassembly side. On the assembly side where you push them together, well then they're coated because you'll be using your fingers. But on the disassembly, sometimes you'll need a tool, to, you know, depending how hot the gun runs, etc. They're, they're a little tight, they're not too bad here. But still, uh, I'd take a brass tool and push on it just a little bit to get it going so you'll just end up scraping the coating off so I didn't coat those on this side but uh, the true the root triggers in and really nice I like the space uh, that we have that I have here from my finger it's really uh, nice and comfortable and of course it's that familiar feel that I have since this is now my third one that I have in my rifles uh, of a two pound take back and a uh, a nice clean wall and then breaks at another or excuse me two and a half pound take back and then a nice clean wall and then breaks with two more pounds i just really love the trigger anyway so that's uh, assembled and ready to go if you remember from the previous videos or if you watched the previous videos the dust cover the really little cheap generic dust covers you get with parts kits really didn't fit and it was really i think more the issue of the dust cover because the plunger and the spring, uh, the detent and the spring just wouldn't engage. I mean, you couldn't push it hard enough without damaging the upper receiver. But the, um, the laser's edge ones I have uh, did fit, in fact. And so um, what I did was I had searched through my pile of leftover AR parts like everybody else has, and I forgot that I had one of these um, without any logo or any kind of... Um, artwork on it at all and so this is the one I, I had test fit uh, skull and crossbones and you know the dead men telling our tales kind of thing um, and I didn't really want to paint over that so I didn't have to because laser's edge I had one exactly the same design same size and I just paint, painted it to match both open and closed um, so that, that that's good that made me happy and we'll um, we'll be able to continue the camouflage right across the whole thing without sacrificing one. I'd rather just sort of keep for a fun build uh, in another case. Um, charging handle and all, uh, it's, been, it's been of course coated and uh, matches well when you put it into position um, and um, just looks, looks like it should when you have it then assembled on the rifle. I didn't coat on inside of it for sake of travel, uh, just where it would show in normal position. Um, the handguard, if you remember, I had uh, suspended it for the oven with nylon string. Well, it left a mark because the nylon stretched and sagged just a little bit and touched here and touched here. Well, I just went ahead and recoated that, uh, hung it back in the oven and cured it, and it is just fine, ready then for our next step. So, uh, have the major parts assembled. Now, I'll do some sub assemblies. Uh, and then we'll get the stencils out. We're going to paint the uh, camouflage stencil pattern in desert tan, and then we're going to follow with the snakeskin pattern in earth brown. Finished coating uh, our 6.5 Grindle build now, and so you saw in the previous videos the uh, um, coyote base coat was done. I went ahead and did stripes with the desert tan, and then came back with the earth brown um, performing the snakeskin, and you can see how this pattern works and it transferred uh, just as I had hoped um, about the right size that I was wondering anyway and uh, then you see the coyote uh, behind this color with the tan and then the brown filling it in making all of this as well and so it seems like uh, the colors have worked out pretty well uh, all the parts now have been coated and striped the same way and you can see then the appearance and consistency we did them. I did do the grip assembled and then took it off for, so that the metal parts could be cured in the oven and this grip then will continue to cure uh, over the next few days. Uh, it's still it's it's not bad to handle but it's lightly tacky uh, so it's going to take a little while yet to cure. Charging handle same way uh, although I did this one separately. 
um, from the rest of the body was not assembled and then gave it a slight bit of the uh, texture and snake skin as well. The barrel was then assembled with the handguard in place uh, onto the receiver and so I had lightly threaded this um, but here is where I made a major mistake. And so for those of you who have not done this kind of coating before, uh, one big advice is put your barrel nut on the barrel before you coat. I had done them separately and it had everything just where I was really happy with the coating and could not get the gas block off. The thickness of the coating was enough to stop this. This white oak armament gas block, but I would think most gas blocks are fairly, they're well tightly fit to the barrel. And when you add the thickness of the paint or coating, yeah, this doesn't come back off without stripping this. And so I'll show a picture up there uh, of the stripping process and things that I did. And you can see it was this Jasco uh, brand of stripper that I got from the Home Depot. Uh, and it took it off like nothing. It was easily removed. And so that was good because there are a lot of things, including some comments I saw on the web from Brownell saying, oh, this is going to be really hard. You probably have to sand or blast it off. But yet that remover took it off uh, really easily and fast. So uh, the barrel, like I say, was done, um, redone then from the gas, from the gas block itself was taken off. Uh, and then uh, this whole section had to be stripped, recoded in the coyote, followed by the desert tan stripes and then followed by the earth brown for the snakeskin patterns. So it goes all the way through the handguard. So when you see the handguard assembled, it all is one uh, continuous flow of pattern. Um, if you notice this, this wire is how I suspended it from an oven. I have an old oven from the probably early to mid 70s. It actually survived a tornado. And so some friends gave it to me for doing some other work. And I use it for powder coating. So I just set it up in the oven. This is aircraft safety wire. Uh, you can see here it's just a safety wire, uh, 30, 32,000 stainless steel. Uh, they use it for tying on many things to make sure they don't come loose on aircraft, air filters and oil filters, you know, things like that. Um, but I still have it from when I was flying a lot. And uh, so it's really quite useful. It's soft and malleable, so you can make it. And then to remove it, just a simple clip with a pair of shears, it easily cuts and then you can take it off um, that way. So that came out really good. Butt stock, same way. I, now it was not assembled because I did not coat the buffer tube uh, and, and those components, castle nut, things like that at that end. I decided to leave those alone just because I'm just gonna scratch it off anyway. And so that part will be black, just what is showing. Um, did coat the uh, Picatinny rail adapter for our key mod uh, as well. And I didn't have it in position, I just coated it separately, but it looks like it'll blend in quite well. Muzzle brake then, it also got the, um, the uh, desert tan and then brown snakeskin coating on it as well. So I'm happy with the way that came out also. The scope rings, I did them just the same, and uh, I'm real happy with the way they look in general also. So, yeah, major mistake here on the coating and sequence of this. Um, one thing to note, you know, again, like I say, if you do this, um, you're going to have to, uh, to, to take your gas block off again. You'll probably have to strip this end of it off. So those of you doing this kind of coatings, you may or may not want to do your barrel. Um, I wanted to cut down on the shininess, but uh, that's one price you're going to have to pay. Uh, you'll have to strip that to get your gas block off if you have a problem with that. So ready for final assembly, and we're going to get to that in just a minute. Continuing on now to assemble our barrel to the upper receiver. I've gone ahead and installed it in a Wheeler upper receiver vice block. There's a guide that goes inside. It has a little piece that comes through to help you guide your gas tube through it. Um, this fit already pretty well, but we'll go ahead and slide that in using that tool and uh, run this backwards through it. And then... Um, Get our barrel key lined up and just check the fit. So everything looks good and snug and tight just like it should be. So that's a, a good thing from both um, BCA on the barrel uh, fit but also on from BK uh, firearms, B King's firearms uh, on their upper receiver 
tolerances in the machining. So we'll go ahead and pull this carefully back out, not to damage the gas tube. Now we got to put um, a little bit of anti-seize on the barrel extension itself. A lot of a lot of people, of course, will say use aeroshell and all that stuff. Well, I'm out of aeroshell, and I've used this successfully before. It's just an, an engine high temperature anti-seize lubricant from Permatex, and uh, it has worked fine in the past. So we'll just put a little bit of this on here, not too much, um, but we don't, we definitely don't want to uh, have this seize in our upper receiver. So I just a little bit of that on there keeping it off the end of the barrel. All right. And we're going to do the same thing for the threads on the end of the um, barrel extension or the, the receiver as well. So we'll set this aside. Go ahead and put some here on the end of this receiver onto the threads. doesn't take too much you can overdo it here and just make a mess out of things but you want to make sure then that the threads have a coating on there as well so you set that aside <laughs> get your hands really clean this stuff goes everywhere uh, this permatex material and just check the end make sure it's clean and we are and then go ahead and thread this back on or guide it back in And twisting this just slightly will help, not too much because you got your gas tube in there. And once you get it in, then don't twist anymore. Seat that home and then that anti-seize lubricant will be distributed around. Now you can run your barrel nut forward and go ahead and thread it on. And again, you'll probably get some excess like this running up. So you can just run a rag here a little bit and wipe that off as best you can. But you see it just gets everywhere all right now I'm gonna get a little rubbing alcohol and clean this up just a little bit before we tighten this up now we go on to start to torque the barrel nut I've set the torque wrench at 35 foot-pounds to begin with and we'll go up from there but I want to get it started back it off sort of uh, tension and adjust those threads a little bit as you're supposed to do so we'll do that three times I've also gone ahead and added just a little bit of tape on here which will make uh, hopefully keep us from scarring this up too much so we'll go up to 35 pounds and we hit our, our limit there so now we'll back off take this off and back it off I want to end up somewhere in the neighborhood of 45 to 50 foot-pounds. So now we'll go ahead and adjust the torque wrench up just slightly. And we'll go to 40 pounds. And again, we're just trying to tension those threads and get them to seat a little bit, just going up gently with it up to our intended target. Okay, so that's 40 pounds. This time I'm just going to go ahead and back it off and we're going to tighten right back to that same number and then we're going to see uh, how our handguard fits because we have to clock with this uh, type of barrel nut and handguard. We have to clock our handguard to make sure it fits uh, properly with the screw alignment. So we'll guide this carefully on here, try not to scratch our covering. And line this up right about there looks good and square and you can see I mean, hopefully you can see our holes are, are too far past so we have to continue our torque up to get to the next set of holes to come across and be lined up so we'll take this back off this is where patience will do a lot of good so we're going to go up just a couple pounds It'll take more than this, but you want to go up slowly so you don't have to continue with really high torque. All right, so clearly that's not going to be enough. So we're going to go more. Now we're at 50 foot-pounds. I'm 
and say we're still not going to be lined up there with that. So we're going to have to keep going up. And this is where we get too far, and then we're going to need a barrel shim. So we'll just keep checking it. I think, though, from what I see, it's not going to go high enough. So now we'll go to 55 foot pounds. Yeah, so clearly that's not going to go uh, far enough to then allow us to clock, clock this without perhaps a barrel shim or a lower torque value. So you can see there we're, we're farther up, but we're not near far enough to get that there. So I, I mean, I could go on up 60, 70 foot pounds, but we only moved maybe a sixteenth of an inch up and just are starting to wink this. So I don't think it's going to do it. We'll go ahead and uh, we'll go to 60, but I'm confident it's not going to be nearly enough. Oh, well, here's where you need to read your gauge a bit better. Maybe it's the paint fumes. <laughs> I don't know. I was just hitting 50 pounds. So let's go on up. This is be 55 pounds. There we can see it move. I still don't think it's going to be enough, but if we can get to 60 or so, that would be okay. Some people go higher than that, but I don't really like to do that. Okay, right there is where it needs to line up, and you can see clearly we moved it, but just not nearly enough. So we'll take this off, take everything apart, add a barrel shim, and try it again. Well, I was able to get uh, two shims in place in the barrel, torqued it up to 58 foot-pounds doing it that way. I did one and just wasn't quite enough to get the position right, so after two shims, uh, I got the 58 foot-pounds, which is perfectly good, and then installed the handguard. It has aligned really well with the upper receiver, and then I've torqued all the way around, just finishing the last couple with the uh, fat wrench, and we're setting this to 25 foot-pounds for the handguard, a little more than you might for a typical uh, scope mount which would be an 18 to 20 maximum for that so handguard is done and installed and then we'll move on now to the uh, muzzle brake moving on now and installing the muzzle brake so we'll put the crush washer on and the crush washer has a bevel the bevel goes towards the barrel and then we're going to add just a few drops of a heavy machinist oil Let's just keep the uh, threads from seizing up on the end. I don't typically use the anti-seize compound because it kind of wanders a bit. And this will make it uh, just a bit too messy for what I want on the end of the muzzle. So normally it's just a little bit of oil and that should be plenty enough to keep us from having an issue. So now we'll grab the brake. And this brake does not have a flat on it. Uh, it's, a, it's a good brake. I got it from eBay, eBay and I've had a couple of these. so. I'm pretty happy with them overall. Uh, it's all stainless steel, but uh, with, without having a flat, well, then we'll have to use a wrench on the inside to tighten it into position. Unfortunately, this won't take too much, uh, at least by my initial tightening, to hit its final position, but we'll see. Alright, after a bit of torquing, I added some tape onto this Allen wrench to get enough leverage and to keep from digging into the metal too much here. But after applying a bit of torque and crusting the washer, I was able to get it to a line up. Um, on this 6.5 Grendel barrel from BCA, they have 6.5 Grendel text right on the center line of the barrel. That kind of gives you a good sight line. I also took a square and just lined it up to the center of the handguard and center of that text and make sure then that I'm really pretty close on centering it. So it uh, looks like that's good and uh, definitely it's not coming off by the time you crush the washer. Uh, the good news is I was wondering about as you crush the washer would we just flake off or chip off this paint on the outside of it and in fact it is held up well. So um, that's good. So everything in, on the upper then is installed except for the scope and scope rings. We'll do that last but for now we'll move on to the lower. All right, continuing on, I've uh, finished the assembly, putting the rear takedown pin in, the spring and detent for it, um, installed the buttstock and uh, buffer tube, 
castle nut and the retainer and in this uh, rear retainer plate I have gone ahead and staked uh, this into the castle nut in two places and so that's something you need to do once you get it tight and square uh, stake this in to keep this castle nut from vibrating loose so that part is done now the only other part really is to assemble the upper and so I have the um, fail zero bolt carrier group all set and ready to go but I'm going to wait to put it in just for a few hours while I go and bake this part so the uh, charging handle has been coated but it has not had its final bake since the uh, snakeskin coat was put onto it. So let's go ahead and put this on here and we'll get a, a view then of how it looks. And there we have the 6.5 Grendel build. Can't wait to shoot this thing. It's going to be an, it's going to be an awful, it's going to be a blast. And so um, I'll get this charging handle baked today. Bolt carrier group all installed, everything lubed up, and then um, put the scope rings on it, uh, mount the scope, and then the gun will be ready. And in the meantime, after that, we're going to start our reloads, and uh, I'll show that process going through. We're going to start with some relatively inexpensive Barnes burner bullets, and then move on into more expensive precision uh, amun ammunition uh, to, to, to judge against the final uh, results. And so we're going to also shoot Hornaday Black in comparison to our hand reloads, but we'll shoot those against our precision hand loads. Anyway, uh, I think it's come out really good. Tell me what you think in the comments and what you think of the looks of a 6.5 Grendel.